Good evening, sacred war, divine beings, family, coming to you tonight um, with the prompt of a fork in a road. A fork in a road. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, so I just listened to Rhonda, I listened to yours, if you listen to this, or, yeah, I just listened to yours, and I resonated with having to, like, choose every day. There's a fork in the road every single day, um, especially for us, light beings, light workers, healers, self-healers, we're all self-healers, first of all, and, um, Every day we get a choice to choose which path we take, right? Like every day there's a fork, we face it, whether we do it or we don't go and don't do it. <laughs> so, um, there's so many, there's so many forks in a road for me. There was one when I was young this was when I was in Russia. I had a fork in the road. I, I was going to go on a mission, on a religious mission, because, because, yeah, well, because Christ came into my life and saved my life when I was 18. Um, when the wall came down in Soviet Union, and so there were so many religions that started coming in and we were like starving like the soviet people they were we were starving for god because it was forbidden it was interesting even though it wasn't like forbidden forbidden but we like we didn't really need it but then we were like looking for it and we were all raised atheists so for me my origin is atheism and I really appreciate it because I'm not attached. I'm not a. I'm not attached to any religion at all whatsoever. There's no like wound, religious wound for me, even though um, the religion religion I did belong to. It, it was a f fucked up um, religion. Anyway, so um, I was going to go on a mission like to serve and to tell people about this religion and about Jesus Christ and or I was going to go and get married so it was between get married to a boy or go on a mission and serve on a mission for a year and a half as a servant of God and I went and I talked to this uh, man of God um, supposedly he was a mission president, we all know, um, <clears throat> how they love to put themselves on pedestals and, uh, you know, control everything. So he basically told me to go and get married. And, and so I obeyed like a good conditioned girl, um, programmed into religion. I obeyed and I went and got married. This was my first husband. And so, um, happily ever after, it was an interesting fork. Yeah, I went, it was like, go alone and serve God or go and get married. And so in this religion, um, the, the going and serving mission was mostly for men and women were supposed to get married and have children and, and procreate. So if that's... The choice a woman should always choose a family and to get married so that was my conditioning when I was 20 I did that and it was interesting because I left across the world I left my country and I came to the United States of America um, with a hundred dollar bill that's that's a true story um, I knew a boy who was interestingly a missionary on his mission in Russia during that time, and that's how we met. And we continued talking, and um, yeah, we're not talking anymore <laughs> after many, many years. 
um, and we're no longer talking. And but we do have a, a beautiful child together, my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I'm so grateful for that. And um, that fork in the road actually did bring me here in the United States of America, where my life is here now. And my work is here, even though it's everywhere. It's in the ethers. And hey, yeah, it's so interesting. You know, I I um I recognize that me being raised atheist, and then being conditioned into the religion, and I know that Christ will come to anyone who seeks him it's the energy it's the divine if we seek the genuine connection to the divine it's going to show up and so normally we didn't know how to seek that connection and so when the religion started coming in they're literally missionaries they're missionaries they're american missionaries in white shirts with ties promising families could be together forever with heavenly heavenly father's plan pray to jesus this is how you pray like we didn't know how to pray and i was in a dark place at 18 years old it was almost i was almost 18 i was in such a dark place my life was constantly in danger um yeah and so i did pray on my knees and jesus came and i cried for hours and hours and i had this these incredible um experiences during that time of my life 18 years old he really pulled me out of the darkness and then you know since he came through religion the religion that's how religion gets you christ will come no matter what but the religion will get you it's like the false light it blinds you and it promises you happily ever after the celestial kingdom and they condition you and um it's like you're programmed, right? You're programmed into the religion. You, even though we as light beings always see through and we always uh, see the people who made mistakes and we don't blame, we don't blame Christ for it because we understand it's the humankind that's in, in per, imperfect. And to me, um, I had to heal. I heal my path back to um, to Christ, basically, because once the religion showed its true colors, because we're not blind and we can see that it's all a bullshit, um, and then we liberate ourselves from that. Then where does Christ go? we don't know like that's just kind of christ just kind of stays with the religion when we leave the religion christ kind of stays there and then we're what happens then we're kind of not with christ any longer yet we kind of still okay with him because we think he's kind of like buddha now like he's sitting next to buddha and shiva and, and they're all just sitting there you know being enlightened <laughs> so funny which is like i don't even know anyway so it's a personal journey obviously it's a personal healing journey to that inner inner christ consciousness that's what it's about that is million millions of years old and it's ancient and it's the ancient technology of love and the regenerating love into the world so yeah a lot of us <clears throat> are returning to that um consciousness and awakening and choosing every day um 
the divine path, knowing which way to go, which way to follow the heart space. So, thank you for feeling me, for loving me, accepting me. I love to be here in this space. Totally. Our children are so, so special. They're born into our lives for a reason. It's so interesting. You know, my, the generational healing reflection, my grandma, my grandma, anytime I would come visit her, and I share this sometimes, like she, she would cry a lot. Anytime I would visit her, even when I came from America, I would visit her, she would cry a lot. Just would never explain why. I never like went deeper and asked her why, what's going on. She would never say. And then my oldest daughter that I mentioned earlier, she, when she moved out, first when she turned 18 and moved out, um, she would say, whenever I talk or think about you, mom, I cry a lot. And so it's interesting to reflect how we feel each other. Like it's like a bloodline. Like my grandmother was crying and my daughter was crying, you know, and um, it's just amazing to feel um, how we're all connected and we carry each other's wounds and we get to um, heal also together, to heal help each other heal as well hey my love stacy roar beautiful angel so grateful for you um yeah just sharing a little bit about the fork in the road and so how i came to america was between getting married to a boy or going on the mission and serving in this religious mission um, serving Christ and sharing Christ's message because Christ did come into my life at 18 which was another fork in the road of its own I chose to follow that uh, revelation of my deep tears that was like my first um, like kind of like a conscious at 18 awakening of some sort and then you know of course Mary Magdalene Mary Magdalene comes anywhere he is and she came through for me so strongly I remember journaling such beautiful downloads and not even understanding what it was like now we understand what it was I felt her, I felt her present with, with presence with him. I felt him. Oh my gosh, the deep tears I cried. It's just like, to me, I compare that to the grandmother ceremony when we grieve and when we cry these deep tears for humanity. Exactly, isn't that interesting? And then once I realized the religion didn't serve the world or me or my life and I left it, Christ kind of, stayed with religion for another few years a few years even when you start awakening christ doesn't come right away a lot of people will still not accept that or understand that there's a certain understanding of that a lot of people associate christ with with that with a person right with that person but I want to like say how I understand it. Like the man of Nazareth, there was a man of Nazareth. His name was not Christ. His name was actually Yeshua, right? Yeshua, Joshua, um, Jesus, you know, which also means Jesus, right? Christ is not really like a last name or anything. And Christ has been there before Jesus was kind of born as Christ over soul. The most 
dense amount of Christ consciousness born in a human body was Yeshua, the man of Nazareth. Right? He is, he is part of us as, as healers, as light workers, as warriors, as angels. He's part of who we are. He's part of our message. This Christ consciousness, right, that was has been born through generations, through so many people and archetypes and and um, incredible people that we now know and have known, and it's it's just we always know we we know. So associated Jesus with religion too until I came across Course in Miracles. Game changer, see him in a whole new light, deeply connected to Sacred Heart. Yes, definitely. And it's, yeah, like I said, it's such an individual journey for each one of us. And then it's so funny, like when he starts showing up, he really starts showing up. For me, he started showing up um, about two and a half years ago. No, like even earlier, three years ago, just three years ago, right? So before that, he was there as a one of the ascended masters or just one of like human being that was a yogi, you know, like a new age people think of Christ that way. But then when he really starts showing up, it's like, wow, this is more galactic. This is like ascension. This is energy work. This is like mastery. This is highest consciousness. Christ's consciousness is the highest consciousness. That's the miraculous healing. That's the energy we are able to tap into to bring through um, incredible wisdom and awakening and guidance. Yes, totally. The Gnostic texts, that's where it's all, it all comes through that. Definitely. The Avalon oracles, you know, the, the ancient wisdom of the feminine, Sophia, the feminine Christ, right? The feminine Christ, it's kind of non-existent. The feminine Christ, that's is the divine feminine the mother the lover the sister just the divine feminine it's who we are and yeah and the Christ in every man has been crucified and put down and beaten <laughs> killed at, at all like in every single man and woman it happened and so but we get to now come back and resurrect in a whole new meaning not in a fanatic way of meaning or blindly naively believing the dogmatic teachings sacrificial texts no can we please just be smart and awake awake and smart and aware connected fully to our highest self into the unified field together in the unified field individually together right awake and smart no longer mesmerized by the stupid bullshit <laughs> Please, no. Don't hi me anymore. <laughs> hi. Oh my God. Please. So it's, it's like, yeah, our boundaries, our boundaries are there and our expectations are high. Definitely because of what we can deliver, what we can give all, we give all, we give all. And so when we know we're not receiving all, we're okay, but no thanks, no thank you. So, yes, 
I'm feeling it all. It's so incredible to be in this moment with you all, to live in this moment, to be awake, to know our worth and our truth, and to choose which way to go. So, hi Nicole, my love. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I love you all so, so much. Thank you. So yes, this was a little bit on that fork in the road. Share how every day we get to choose. And there's some couple of interesting forks that I have shared, Nicole. Some Christ messages came through. Interesting. I love him. He's a brother. He's the most incredible divine teacher. He helps us. He's galactic. He's magical and uh, he's a soldier, he's a warrior. He is by our sides, with us, right? Like he's angelic, um, he's within us. It's, it's what we came here to heal, that bloodline that connects us to our magic, our fucking magic. We didn't just imagine it. We have been there, we have seen it all. We didn't just dream of it. It's in our bones, it's our birthright to reclaim all of it and all of it. All of the miraculous healing for all living beings, for each other. It's just so heartbreaking and, and also activating, activating. It's the compassion in action, the empath in action the empath holds that gift of sensitivity of sensitivity to feel to transmute mm, yeah just feeling this message as within so without yes thank you i love you as above, so below. Think, understand, feel, and know. I am. We are. One. Yes. See and hear. And as always, may all of our moments of conscious awake time always be in service to all beings everything we say and do everything we think and act upon may all of that be always in service to liberation and freedom for all beings blessed